On the 29th of September, Neil Young with Crazy Horse, Foo Fighters, The Black Keys, Band of Horses, and K-9 fight to eradicate extreme poverty. You know, this is the start of something really great. This isn't just uh, your typical benefit because there's some bands who believe in a cause. This is a much bigger movement than that, and it's pretty exhilarating, actually. I think the Global Poverty Project has, stands in a good space at the moment and, and in a good light for people. People are curious about it. The way that it's being done is, is very unique with the, uh, with, with the idea that you have to do something good to get in here. How they unloaded all the tickets is getting people to you know, post things on Facebook and Twitter. In fact, they're streaming the concert on New York Times. There's 60,000 people on the Great Lawn in Central Park that's being live streamed to a dozen different places through these incredible organizations, hundreds of millions of dollars being raised, and all of it is for the purpose of ending global poverty. This is like my fantasy. I, I mean, I can't even believe it's real. I wrote this song for times like these. The, uh, the video you just saw was the result of years of hard work, uh, perseverance, and the collective passion of thousands of young people working towards one vision to build a movement to end extreme poverty within our lifetime. It's a tremendous honor to be with you here today. My journey towards a deeper understanding of issues of extreme poverty began when I was 14 years old. And it was then I was living in Melbourne, Australia, and I was given the opportunity to go to the Philippines with World Vision to see and experience their work firsthand. And there was really one night in the Philippines that impacted my life to such a huge extent that I've never, ever been the same since. And this night we were taken onto a slum, which some of you may have heard of. It's a slum called Smoky Mountain. But it's an entire community built on top of a rubbish dump where the very infrastructure of this whole community revolves around scavenging. And so the children literally run after the garbage trucks and they try to get bits of scrap metal, piece of food and things that they can recycle. And that night I was placed in the care of a kid my own age. We were both 14 years old at the time. His name was Sonny Boy. And Sonny Boy took me to his house that night and I had no idea what to expect until it came time to go to, until it came time for dinner. And we cooked a meal on the ground together. And then after dinner, we cleared away the pots and pans and we lay down myself Sonny Boy and the rest of his family, seven of us in this long line. And I'll never ever forget lying there that night with the smell of rubbish all around us and cockroaches crawling all over us that night. That night changed my life forever. I came back to Australia, but the, the, the picture of Sonny Boy and his life was stuck firmly in my mind and I couldn't get out of his mind. I thought, you know, we're, we're similar in so many ways. We're the same age. We've got the same passion for life, but yet we were se separated by circumstances that in many ways were entirely beyond our control. And in that moment, it dawned on me, I thought, you know, even if I could raise all the money in the world, it wouldn't be enough to solve these issues alone. And I thought we have to have collective and coordinated action by young people all over the world. And so this idea, this idea of, of thousands of citizens taking action inspired me to found an organization in Australia called the Oak Tree Foundation that became the largest youth non-profit in the country. And off the back of that, we ran the Make Poverty History concert. We were inspired by what Bono and Bob Geldof did in the UK. And so we ran this huge campaign that ultimately resulted in over a million Australians getting involved. And we managed to convince the Australian government to double foreign aid, an additional $4.3 billion for the world's poor in 2007. And we were really excited because just, just nine days ago, as a result of this growing aid envelope and increased advocacy efforts, the Australian government committed an additional $80 million focused just on polio eradication last week. And so this is the same idea that brought together the Black Keys, Neil Young with Crazy Horse, Foo Fighters, Band of Horses, K9 and so many others on the Great Lawn of Central Park last September as they performed in front of 60,000 global citizens 
with this vision that we could be the generation to end extreme poverty. And all our nonprofit partners came on stage and committed an additional $1.3 billion in new funding to ultimately end extreme poverty. And this same idea still fills my heart today with hope for the future. And so I want to stand before you today on behalf of all the citizen philanthropists involved to say that we can be the generation to end extreme poverty. And I firmly believe that action speaks much louder than words. So today I want to commit, inspired by the amazing work that Chid Liberty and all the amazing social entrepreneurs from Liberia are doing, we want to commit to have over 100,000 people active in support of them by the end of this year. Truly, I believe that we can, t we can, we can achieve this together. And if there's one thing I've learned, thank you. <laughs> I, I firmly believe we can be the generation to end extreme poverty. Let's do it together. Thank you.